If you own a Celestron CGX mount and you're having some weird noises or issues with guiding, I'm going to show you a few little tricks here that can help improve your performance. Once again, thank you so much for joining me again for another video here on my channel. My name is Max. Today we're checking out the Celestron CGX and just a few really quick maintenance ideas that I have for you to improve your performance. This specific CGX was brought to me because it has a really weird vibration noise coming from the declination access. So we're going to check out that and see what we can do to fix that. Normally it's just an adjustment of the tension between the worm gear and the main spur gear here at the top. So hopefully that will just fix the noise issue that we're having but it is quite loud. The other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people don't really pay attention to how tight the belt is. The belt matters a lot because the harder you torque that belt the more tension it has on the whole system. But you also don't want it too loose because the belt can fall off. So we're going to take a look at what the optimal tension would be for your belt. Now keep in mind if you are still under warranty all of these things should be handled by Celestron under warranty. But if you're a DIY person or you want to explore Explore fixing your own telescope instead of having to spend a lot on maintenance, this video might be of help to you. Now I'm going to be using the declination axis as our example for today. We need to understand how everything kind of works in the CGX to be able to do the maintenance properly. You've got your main servo motor right here. There's some reduction gears in here, and it goes out to these two pulleys. These two pulleys, of course, have your belt on it. This is what spins around. If I hit the hand controller, you can see there it spins around. You've got the bracket that it mounts on to. You've got these two screws here, which adjust the tension between the worm and the main spur gear. You can see the worm gear is back here, and it meshes with the spur gear here on the bottom of the declination axis. Now, the major thing that we need to be able to do today to fix the noise that we're having This screw specifically right here is what goes all the way through this aluminum block and it extends out the back and it basically is a little stop that gives us our springing action. If you take your motor and you push it a little bit like this, you can see that my motor has a little bit of a spring action. You want about that much. You don't want too much springing action because the heavier the optical tube you put on here with a looser spring like that, it could jump the teeth, which you don't want that. This screw here affects the tension. This has a little spring on the inside of it and it affects the tension between the worm and the main spur gear. So we are going to have to adjust this one today to fix the noise that we're having and leave this one completely alone because we don't want to adjust the springing action as it is properly adjusted. But we do need to adjust the tension though of the worm to be able to have a nice fluid sound. Worm. We're gonna to have to adjust this a little bit to where it's a little bit tighter. Let's try again on the noise. The second thing I want to show you real fast is the belt here. You want to be able to adjust your belts so that they have the proper tension between them. What you'll have to do is there is three screws on the side of the motor over here. They're right here on the side here. And then there's a small socket head right here. You will adjust those two to pull this whole pulley further out or further in. This will adjust the tension. You want to be able to move the belt a little bit, but not so much that you can move it around or that it pops off the pulleys there. You just want to have it just tight enough that it still has some flexure to it, but not too much and not too hard either to where there's no give at all. That is also counterproductive.
The last thing I want to talk about is what you just heard where the motor was fluttering a little bit and even speeding up and then going back down to normal. What I have found from repairing a few of these that have had a similar problem is it's not your motor itself that's bad and it's not even the encoder itself that's bad. It's actually the cable connections that go through the mount down into the boards. The connectors that Celestron uses on these particular motors are super tiny. And the problem with their way of design on the CGX is that the wires are fed up through the mount, through the hard stops. The problem with that is, is that they come in and they come up behind the motor mount. And what happens is sometimes they get pinched. And when that happens, the connections can drop just for a quarter of a second, especially because motors give off vibration in that whole bracket. So sometimes they're causing a little bit of flutter in the motor. That is a design problem. I have personally swapped out a motor and I've swapped out an encoder on one of these and it does not fix it usually. What I have done though, is you'll have to take the two screws on the bottom of the motor mount, pull the motor mount completely out, pull that wire out and kind of reseat it nicely into the little groove. Make sure that everything looks okay. And then on the side here where all of your connectors are, just make sure that your connectors are really nice and free of obstruction. Maybe they're not you know, bent real hard, they don't really have a 90 degree kink in them, anything like that will affect this issue. So these maintenance items are things that you will probably have to come across as a CGX owner. I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Celestron CGX maintenance ideas for you to get optimal performance. I'll see you guys next time in another video.